This segment of Money Matters Boston is brought to you by SHP Financial. All right, we're back and we're here at TK O'Malley's in Situate, Massachusetts. We're having a good time and the conversation continues with Steve Richardson, uh, Regional Communications Director for Social Security, Social Security Administration. And we had everybody somehow is involved in Social Security one way or the other. Maybe they're not getting it exactly because uh, they participated in a program outside, but their spouse is. Everybody is somehow connected. They have questions. And so if you don't mind, I'm going to ask a couple of the questions sure. that I, uh, that I sure. received. And the first Absolutely. one um, comes from Dave, and he's down in Dartmouth, Massachusetts, and asks about can he be working and collecting Social Security at the same time? I think that's a good question because, you know, uh, people aren't just staying home and knitting when That's they're right. 65 years old. It's a great question. It really is. And to open to what you had said, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, to the average American, Social Security represents about 41% yep. of their pre-retirement income. So, so there's a, you know, that's a large portion of one's retirement portfolio. So yeah. the average wage earner, Social Security is going to represent a good chunk of their 41%, in fact, of their retirement portfolio. As far as working, one of the most common questions. Yeah. Can I work and collect at the same time? Well, we know you can't draw until you're at least age 62. Yep. That's an easy one. Mm -hmm. And we also know that if you draw prior to your full retirement age, which for most people now is 66, if you draw prior to 66, you're, you're electing benefits at a reduced rate. But what comes along with drawing prior to your full retirement age at any time between 62 and 66 is a work restriction law that says, I would like to work and collect benefits at the same time. Yeah. We restrict you enormously as to how much you can make. In fact, you can only earn this year $15,120 a year and be eligible for a payment every month yeah. if you're between the age of 62 through the year you turn 66. Yeah. So that's part of financial, that's part of planning right. in and of itself. If somebody walks into an office and wants to file for retirement benefits, the first thing we're gonna ask them if they're 63 years old, how much do you make? Yep. And we will pay them based on, or give them an answer based on what they, they are making. If somebody comes in and says, I'm making 150 grand a year, we'll say, well, you can't file. Right. You can file, but you're technically not eligible for payment. So you have, in a sense, made the decision yourself. Okay. So. Oh, that's a good one. And this comes from Maxine in Taunton. She had a question about the COLA, and it's a long-winded question. I, bas I basically know what she's trying to ask. How do they calculate the cost of living adjustments on a social security payment, I, I think people stopped getting an increase in the last couple of years because maybe they were having a deduction taken out for Medicare and their Part D, because that comes out of your social security check if elected, yeah. right? Yep. And, um, and then they, they didn't get a cost of living increase because of deflation. How does that all calculate out? Yeah, these, this is a common question. It's, it, people really want to know because it, it, what the COLA is, the cost of living increase, it's, the, it's a protection to the benefit. Yep. It's, a, it's, a, it's a guarantee that your benefit, not a guarantee, but it's a, it's a benefit that's going to increase in commensurate with the economy every January 1st. Right. So it's a protection, it's a built-in protection for Social Security recipients. It's based on the consumer price index of durable goods and the wages of urban workers. Mm -hmm. So this, the CPI index is carried, and this can be followed as public information. You can track this throughout the year and it's tracked up until the last week of the, of the third quarter of the previous year. So you can kind of get a gauge mathematically on what your cost of living increase is gonna be on the following January 1st. Interesting you say there were a couple of years there. Yeah, we did not get cost of living increases. Yep. And mathematically, without taking too much time, essentially if the index doesn't rise above a certain number relative to the previous year's index rise, you won't see a cost of living increase. And that was the first time that we hadn't seen cost of living increases. This past January into Jan into 2013, we saw a cost of living increase. Well, if Mayor Bloomberg has its way, you're not going to see any colas. Like, what are they, banning them this big or this big? Or, so that's not related to the cola of yours? Not or? yet. Okay, so uh, we know that's for sure. Um, and then I guess, you know, the, the, the final question just comes, um, it's, it's just general about um, when is the right time to file. And I yep. think we know the answer. It's, it's really based on a lot of factors. Correct. Yeah, I think, you know, again, and it all falls back on our constant theme of education. Yeah. And to no point number one, that, that for every month prior to your full retirement age, you're electing to draw your benefits. You're electing benefits at a reduced rate. And guess what? That reduction is permanent. You're locking yourself into that amount. Yep. Individuals have an option of waiting to their full retirement age to draw what? An unreduced benefit. 
But there's another element that people need to be aware of, and that is by delaying your benefits beyond your full retirement age, for every year beyond your full retirement age that you elect to delay collection, yep. you're getting what are called delayed retirement credits, which can, which can increase your benefit by about 8% per year. So for every month prior to your full retirement age, you're locking in at a re reduced rate. For every month beyond your full retirement age that you elect to delay, you're locking in at an increased rate. Well, Steve Richardson is the Regional Communications Director for Social Security. When we come back, we'll be joined by financial expert Matthew Peck from SHP Financial. Hang with us. Money Matters Boston. We'll be right back in just a minute.